What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another week of NFL Picks. It is officially Christmas weekend. Um, this Monday coming up is Christmas Day. It's hard to believe, man. We're already at the end of 2023. It is already time for Santa Claus to come down the chimney. Um, <laughs> got a Christmas Eve Sunday full of football, man. It's there's nothing like it. There's absolutely nothing like it. Um, got some amazing games this week. Um, to celebrate the Christmas holiday, games with a lot of playoff implications. Um, all throughout. So, man, without further ado. So I wasted any more time. Let's get right into it. Um, last week I had the best week I think I've had in in damn good few weeks. Um, twelve and four, it's a very solid week. Overall record one hundred thirty seven and eighty seven. Lock of the week ten and five, and upset of the week six and nine. So I won on both my lock and upset of the week. Um. All right, so getting into these games, man. Thursday night football. You got a game right here. There's playoff implications, um, especially between these two teams, and other teams can be affected. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, the seven and seven Saints, five hundred visiting the seven and seven Rams. Um, I it just to me, it feels like the Rams. They're just overall the better team. They're more well coached. It's much easier to watch the Rams than it is to watch the Saints, and it's in L.A. on a short week Thursday night. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm actually going to take the Rams here. Um, just feels like to me they're going to come out, um, and they're just overall the better team, um, and, and they'll probably have their way most points this game. It's why I could see the Saints, you know, trying to make it a game towards the end, but just to me feels like the Rams are going to, um, probably come out and by the third quarter, you know, be in control of this game and not let up. So I, I think the Rams win in a key real win that can definitely, you know, keep them in that playoff position in the NFC. Um, next game, we got two Saturday games this week, both brought to you by NBC and Peacock. First one, 430 on NBC. Um, the eight and six Bengals visiting Pittsburgh Steelers who are 500. The Steelers have not had a losing season with Mike Tomlin. You look at those three games left. Um, it's going to be a tough uphill battle for them. Um, if you look at it to get to nine wins, but they're at home here hosting the Bengals and Jake Browning. He's been able to produce some magic these past few weeks. Um, Cincinnati, I believe if they had ended today would be in the playoffs Pittsburgh is pretty much fighting for their season here. Um, in in Heinz Field, Pittsburgh, you're going to have the terrible towels going. Um, I think that Jake Brown and Magic runs out, and I think the Steelers pull this one off. I feel like that crowd is really going to get into it. Um, going to make it hard on that Bengals offense, um, which is going to, I think, produce a more low-scoring game. But I think the – and Jamar Chase is out too. That's a big key factor. Jamar Chase is going to be out. So – I think the Steelers are going to pull this one off. The defense is going to do their thing. Um, Mason Rudolph going in there. Um, can he produce some more magic for Pittsburgh? I don't know. I, I think the Steelers do just enough to pick up the win here. Um, Saturday night in L.A., you have the Bills, who maybe you can say are one of the hottest teams in football after – a win in Kansas City, and a win at home versus Dallas. Um, they have definitely got themselves right back into that playoff mix. <clears throat> um, as they visit the L.A. Chargers, who you pretty much say, you know, the season is done. They really don't have any <clears throat> purpose um, but to just play spoiler here. Definitely feel like the Bills come out with this win, but I could honestly see the Chargers making the game out because I really could. Um, Bills are having to travel across the country. That is, I think, the big story here. But I think Buffalo comes out. They get the win here um, in L.A. Um, to stay right there in that playoff race, man. The AFC playoff race really heating up these final few weeks, and I feel like Buffalo gets the win here over the Chargers. Heading into our Sunday 1 o'clock action, 
two teams with really nothing to play with. Um, Washington, they're going to let go of everyone at the end of the season, and Ron Rivera probably promote the enemy to head coach. Um, it's been a very disappointing back half of this season for them. I think they, they started three and three, and since then they've gone like one and seven. Um, that That's not good at all. The Jets, it's been a very disappointing season. It doesn't – I mean, I would not anticipate Aaron Rodgers' plays. I mean, he could for all I know because, you know, I think he – Really wants to prove that point, you know, being the fastest to ever come back from an Achilles. But I don't know if it is in his best interest to play at this point. Um, the Jets are out of playoff. They eliminate from the playoffs. So I'm going to go. But I am going to go ahead because it does just feel like it's going to be a game where the Jets just come out and dominate. The Commanders really have no life left to that season. So I think the Jets probably come out um, and probably run all over. The Commanders, um, not that it's saying much, but it just feels like one of those games the Jets will pick up the win. And next game, battle in the NFC North. This is going to be a good one right here. Um, the Lions, I think, with this win, they have an opportunity to clinch the NFC North. Um, they would clinch the first NFC North title since, God, I don't know how long, man. I don't know. I can't tell you the last time. 1992. Wow. They they can do that this they can do that this Sunday. Um with a win in Minnesota. Um But to me man, it always feels like the Vikings and Lions they play each other very tough. They play each other down to the wire. Um and it feels like it's going to be another one of those games, man. Nick Mullins, you know, even in the loss, it's he looked pretty good, but you got to, I think, contribute that loss to play calling and Kevin O'Connell. They know this is a big game. They know they have to win this game to stay tracking that playoff race and not be completely out of it for the division. So I'm going to go ahead. It's at home in Minnesota, in U.S. Bank. I'm going to give this one to the Vikings, man. I feel like they're going to pull it out um, versus the Lions. Um, the Lions are not going to be able to wrap up that NFC North yet. These two teams, too, play in Week 18, so we'll see what playoff implications there are hanging in the balance there. But, yeah, it's going to definitely be very uh, – it's going to be a good game in Minnesota on Sunday. Next game, another game with playoff implications written all over it. The Cleveland Browns um, going to Houston to take on the Texans. No, Deshaun Watson is not playing, but it will be Joe Flacco. C.J. Stroud should be back. Um, man, you want to talk about, you know, obviously the Texans, they're right there. You know, they're right there for the AFC South. It's a three-way tie with Jacksonville, Indy, and them. Um, so honestly, man, it's, that's another big race. It's going to be so interesting to watch coming down the stretch in those final few weeks. Um, with that being said, Houston is at home. Um, it, it I, I mean, Cleveland it doesn't feel like they're going to come down there and get the win. I think C.J. Stroud, he's probably going to have another signature game. Um, probably going to be another one that comes down to the wire. But C.J. Stroud, in the end, is going to be able to lead the Houston Texans to a victory um, and keep them right in that playoff race. See, you have so many teams in the AFC to where, you know, they can't they, – they cannot drop a game. Now, Cleveland is very – they are at this point firm in that race. Um, but a loss here would even – it would really hit them and their chances to make it. A, a win here for Cleveland probably almost guarantees they are in. Um, but I think Houston understands, man, you know, D'Amico, Ryans, and that staff, they have to get a win. They have to keep pacing this division race, keep pacing that playoff race. I think they're going to do it, man. So give me the Texans. Next game here um, – Man, it's just I cannot believe we lost the Panthers. I really cannot. Um, I'm I don't know if any more people will be at this game this week. I mean, I'm sure they will because the Packers, you know, are an actual franchise that have had success. Um, but they're basically hanging off for their playoff lives too. They pretty much have to win out to get in. Um, they've had a very tough past few weeks in games. You can definitely say they should have won. They lost to Tampa last week and. 
who they lost to the Giants. Um, but they are a young team, but man, they've let a big opportunity slip through their hands. Um, but here in Charlotte, it feels like the Packers, you know, they they they're not gonna be like the Falcons. They're gonna come out and they they will bounce back in this one to get that win. Um, I, I just I still can't believe we did not beat the Panthers last week. But I feel like Green Bay goes in there, gets the win. Um, don't know how many people will be there, but I feel like the Packers should go in there and get the win. Next game here, you have Seattle Seahawks, man, it was a big win for them last night to keep their season alive. Big win for them. Um, they go to Tennessee to take on the Titans. Um, look, Seattle's trying to get right back into it in the in the NFC in that wild card race. And I feel like they're going to keep pace here. Um, and whoever it is, you know, Drew Locke, I mean, I know Will Levis went down, man. So, you know, how long he's going to be out, that's really going to be, you know, a Big loss for the Titans. That's a team that basically their season, it's been a very disappointing season in Nashville. So I got to go ahead. I think Seattle goes down there, takes care of business, and gets right back into that playoff mix, that seventh, eighth seed in the NFC. They want to be, they were there last year. They were the seventh seed last year. They're hoping to sneak in this year, man. Um, Very similar situation. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Seahawks here. All right. <laughs> oh, um, want to talk about this game. Um, I will be talking about it later this week, along with some other stuff. I got to talk about some other stuff, man. Um, Taylor Reineke is our quarterback now. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should go live a little later on and address it. I, I mean, man, listen. It's like, I might have to do a live every day this week. All right, let's get on with this actual game here. The Colts are in firm playoff position. Um, They're looking to basically take care of business. For the Falcons, listen, mathematically, we could snow possibly win the NFC South if a few things fall in our favor. Um, Now, there's a lot of Falcons fans, you know, that want to be put out their misery. You know, they want to lose. And, you know, I never root to lose. I'm going to be going to this game. It'll probably be the final home game all year. I don't see us winning the NFC South. I've already established that. To me, it feels like this is going to be that game. Heineke comes in, and the offense is going to probably have their best game all season. No turnovers. Bijan's going to eat. Kyle Pitts is probably going to get a touchdown. It feels like that game where the Falcons are going to come out and win. Um, it's probably going to be another close game. Um, the Colts also could come in here, maybe sleeping a little bit. They've they're riding a little win streak. Maybe they come in here. You know, they can't take us seriously. I mean, honestly, who would take us seriously if we can't beat the Panthers? But it, more so than anything, it feels like that game. We're just going to come out. We're going to have a great game on offense, and we're going to come out with a win. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna pick the Falcons here. Yeah, I'm really actually gonna do it. I'm gonna pick us here. Um, heading into that four o'clock window, and, and talking about this game, want to talk about um, you know, the Falcons and all that. This is another game. You know, at Jacksonville um has really been on the downward trend the past few weeks. Um. And they go to Tampa, man, and the Buccaneers look like the best team in the NFC South. They look like they should win the division. Um, But, man, honestly, with all that being said, you know, Jacksonville is in a very tough division race of their own. Um, And I really honestly feel like, you know, Trevor Lawrence, I don't know what his status is. I know he's a concussion protocol. Um, Man, it's kind of been hard to watch Jacksonville this year. It has because, man, they're supposed to be, you know, this, you know, dominant offense with all these weapons. And, you know, it just feels like they can't get them involved. They have actually a good defense that, you know, can, you know, get them through a lot of those games. Um, to me, man, it does feel like the Bucks are due for a loss in all seriousness. It, I mean, they've won three games in a row. Um, I know it's at home in Tampa. It's very if they win this game, they're in the drive for seats to win the NFC South. They have a game versus the Saints next week. They go to Carolina to finish the year. Um, 
But to me, man, it just feels like this is the NFC South. This is the worst division in football. And I feel like the Jaguars are going to win. And with that being said, a warning to all Falcons fans, they're going to give us another false sense of hope after this week. I really feel like it's going to happen. They're, they're going to just delay putting us out of our misery um, with what happens in the Thursday night game and what happens here. I feel like, you know, it's going to fall exactly how it needs to fall for us to keep our season alive one more week and just delaying the inevitable. Um, but I do think the Jags go in there because they're in a very tough division race in a division you looked at in the preseason. And you said, man, this, this should be the easiest division, you know, in all football to predict the Jaguars are going to run away with it. You know, Houston and India are right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this one to the Jags. They get back on track. All right. 425. Um, big game in Miami versus two 10 and four teams, the Cowboys and dolphins. Um, Dallas is coming off a very disappointing loss in Buffalo where they just couldn't get anything going with the offense. Miami, I mean, they shut the Jets out. You know, it's, it's typical Dolphins fashion. This, to me, does definitely feel like an offensive shootout. It just feels like it's going to be one of those games where you're going to get a big-time offensive shootout. Um, you're probably going to get a lot of scoring in this game. You know, you maybe hope for Miami. Tyreek Hill is back out there to take care, you know, to get his, you know, get back to his typical ways. Um, and Dak Prescott and that offense, get it back together. Um, with that being said, man, I got a feeling that the Cowboys really have come back down to earth a little bit. I do feel like the Dolphins are going to pull this one out, come out with a win and an offensive shootout. It just feels like that game, man. Um, so with that being said, going to pick Miami here. Could definitely be wrong. This was one of the tougher games to pick, one of those games I do I really feel confident in this pick. Not too much, but I just feel like the Dolphins are going to come out and win this game. Um, all right, heading on to the uh, Cardinals and Bears here, two very disappointing teams. Probably two teams that are going to be picking at the top of the draft. Um, Chicago is looking to hang on to their playoff hopes, I think, by a threat. They haven't been officially eliminated yet. But honestly, I'd be lying if I said I, I, I just feel like Arizona's probably going to come in here and get the win. It feels like it, there's not really going to be much going on in this ballgame at all. Not much reason to get excited. Um, but at the end of the day, the Cardinals are just going to go in there, pull it out versus the Bears, dash their playoff hopes officially. Um, you know, the Cardinals have played, you know, most of these games very tough this season. So I honestly think they go into Chicago and will get a win versus the Bears. All right, so you have a Sunday night game, not on NBC for some reason, but on NFL Network. The New England Patriots and the Denver Broncos. Denver is looking to keep their season alive, you know, to get into the playoffs with a win. New England, um, it's I mean, it's been the worst season there since the 90s. Um you know, I mean, you want to talk about how disappointing it has been. I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to – you got to roll with Denver here. But it does feel like it's going to be a close game. It feels like Belichick and Peyton, two of the best coaches, you know, of this generation. It does feel like, you know, there's – go that the Patriots are going to come into Denver and give it their best shot. But ultimately, the Broncos do come out with the win. Um get over 500, stay in that playoff race. New England, trying the distance closer into the top of the draft. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this one to Denver. We're not done yet, though. We got three games on Christmas Day. Christmas triple header. First game here, um, six and eight Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I, think that, I think this is just pretty obvious here. The Chiefs, they really are looking to get back on track. Um, getting back into it, you know, back to those winning ways as we get closer to January. Um, feels like they come out, take care of business versus the Raiders. Um, you know, they they the Raiders are definitely fighting for Antonio Pierce. They had that, you know, 63 point margin they got on the Chargers last week to officially seal Brandon Sellers fate. But honestly, man, it, it just feels like, you know, I mean, it's it's the Chiefs and then it's 
Patrick Mahomes. I mean, it feels like they're going to come out and take care of business. 4.30 in South Philly on Christmas. Um, I wonder if Santa Claus is going to get beaten up again. Um, you have the Giants, man, who I think, I mean, they're hanging on by a threat as well. Um, I think a loss officially eliminates them as well. Um, Philly, I mean, it's been a tough past few games, and I saw it coming from a mile away too. I saw it coming that, you know, this stretch they had, Buffalo, which, I mean, they got an overtime win against, but they really should have lost that game. Had the 49ers coming through there, had to go to Dallas, had to go to Seattle. That is about as tough of a four-game stretch as you can possibly get in the NFL. Um, but, you know, they have three games left. Um, you know, three games you look at it should be cakewalks. And I honestly probably will say it starts here. I think they're going to come out and I think they're going to obliterate the Giants, if you're asking me. Um, the lock of the week, I think they're going to just absolutely smash them 44 to nothing. <laughs> uh, it just feels like that game. I, I don't think the Giants are going to be able to get anything going. Eagles come out, strong Christmas Day win. And then to end it all off, this really might honestly be the game of the year. In my opinion, could very well be the Super Bowl preview. Um, two 11 and three teams, the best teams in their conference, the number one seed, the Baltimore Ravens and the San Francisco 49ers. It, it honestly feels like this should be, um, and it was actually a very similar position four years ago where these two teams met in Baltimore and we thought it was a Super Bowl preview. That year, the Ravens disappointed in the playoffs. 49ers did make it to the Super Bowl, also the Chiefs. It feels like here, man, this is a Super Bowl preview. It really does. And it feels like you're going to be in, you know, as you're finishing up opening those gifts, you are you are in for a tree on Christmas night. We all are. Um, It's in San Francisco. The Ravens are traveling across the country. So I do got to go ahead. Give it to the 49ers because they are at home. If it was in Baltimore, I would take the Ravens. But, man, it's just – I feel feel like this is this could very well be I, – I know I've said this several times. I feel like this is game of the year. And I feel like this can also be the – I feel like if these two teams can, check, can take care of business in January, this is the Super Bowl preview. Um, I feel like you're going to get the 49ers, Ravens, Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson, um, all those weapons for San Francisco – they're going to get involved. Lamar Jackson is going to do his thing. We're in for a great one on Christmas night. And the 49ers ultimately come out on top. So with that being said, man, week 16, um, this is not the last you'll see of me this week. I can tell you that for sure. Um, I don't know if I'll go live later tonight, man, or if maybe I'll just wait till a little later in the week. But i talk more about the Falcons, man. But with that being said, going to be a great weekend of football. Great Christmas Day full of football, um, and I will see you guys in the next one.